Configuring and flying our DIY 3D printed drone, this time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack 5. This is the finale in our DIY drone series we've been working on. We've gone through the steps of picking your parts, designing the frame, catting it, and in the last video we assembled it. And this video we're going to be programming it with Betaflight and actually getting it in the air and going for our first flight. So before we actually configure our drone in Betaflight, there are a couple more things we need to do. The first one is binding our transmitter and receiver. This is going to vary depending on what system you're using, but if you're using Crossfire with a TBS Tango or a similar radio like the ones I have linked down below, really all you have to do is go into your radio, set it to bind mode, hit the button once on your receiver, the transmitter will automatically update it and you're done. Now that said, we're using this receiver in SBUS mode and not taking full advantage of its features. So you need to go down in your radio and configure the output of channel 1 to be SBUS. Again, that's why I love Crossfire, it's super simple. Now you can go into Betaflight and see that the radio is actually sending commands to the flight controller. Now you might notice the TRA and E, the throttle, rudder, elevator, and ailerons, aren't in the correct order. And basically this is going to, again, depending on what radio you use and what its output is configured to, it's going to vary. And you need to make sure these line up so that when your radio is sending a throttle command, it's going to the throttle channel. You do not want to get into a situation where your radio tells the drone to arm because the channels are misconfigured or something, and you have your props on and it tries to take off. Now, Betaflight generally won't let you arm the drone while it's plugged in. However, just to be safe, you should keep the props off until you're fully set up and ready to fly. Now, the great thing about Betaflight is everything just works. It has a pretty conservative tune and works with most small micro quads, just out of the box. Very little tuning. Now, if you want auto like level or horizon following or anything like that, yeah, you're going to need to configure it a bit more. But this is just for a raw FPV drone. It just works. The next thing you're going to want to configure in beta flight is your arming modes and mode switches. This is going to affect how the drone flies or let it arm. Now you could always arm the drone by doing the usual down and to the right on the throttle stick. However, I like to have a quick disarm and rearm button so that if I'm falling out of the sky or something, I can disarm it uh, after a crash and it won't cause more damage while the drone tries to correct itself and all that. So now we're going to go into our mode tab and scroll down to where it says arm. Next to that, you'll see a button that says aux 1, 2, 3, so on. You're going to want to pick the channel that correlates to the button you have set up on your radio. In my case, aux 1 is the button I want to use for arming, so I'll leave that selected as aux 1. And then the sliders on the right dictate the range in which that mode is active. In this case, I want the arm mode to activate anytime this value is above the middle point. So let's just say the last third. Now, it, since it's a toggle on-off switch, it is either going to be at one end or the other, so this works. Now, another option is to use a multi-way switch so that any time you have it switched to the center or the last position, you can have it arm directly into angle mode or traditional flying mode or horizon where it'll self-level and so on. However, I fly these drones mostly in manual or acro mode, and so I'm not configuring any other modes here. Another cool feature, if your ESCs and flight controllers support it, is reversing. Or in this case, they call it turtle mode or crash recovery mode. And what this does is when you hit the button you programmed for recovery mode, and you move the stick left or right, it will actually roll the drone. It reverses the thrust of the motors and flips the drone so you don't always have to go do that walk of shame. You do have to be wary that you might have broken an arm or you have other damage to the drone, but if you think you just bumped into something and disarmed and you landed upside down, turtle mode is a quick way to get back in the air. The last thing you're going to want to do is go back to the main page and calibrate your accelero accelerometer to be level. This tells the drone what level is. Now you can go one step further and calibrate the gyro and such, but that's really only critical if you're going to be using self-leveling modes and so on. We're not covering that in this video, so I'm going to skip over that. Now, in theory, you can unplug the drone, plug in a battery, and take off. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Actually, that's not true. There's this fun little thing called Part 107. Part 107 is a new, relatively new, the last few years, commercial drone operator's license. Now, Hack 5 videos make a little bit of money, therefore this is a commercial operation and I can't fly this drone. So instead, I'm going to have my friend who doesn't really enjoy being on camera 
uh, fly this drone for me. So that's the footage you're about to see is my friend flying this drone around my backyard. Enjoy. And there you go. We just designed, 3D printed, and assembled, programmed, and flew our own DIY drone. This is a really cheap way to get into the hobby. It is a bit involved. You're not just going to go and buy a drone off the shelf and fly it. It's not going to win any, you know, races probably. It's not going to win any freestyle awards. But it lets you experiment and really get to understand the hardware. And once you do that, you can do anything. The awesome part is you can now take this design, revise it a bit, and get it made out of carbon fiber through various services. You can go and design your own drone frame and sell it if you are so inclined. Uh, the world is your oyster. Once you know how to design stuff and build it and do these things up from scratch, you'll start looking for ways to solve these problems and make new things. I hope you all enjoyed this series. I really put, enjoyed putting it together and getting back to basics. In the next few videos, we're going to be getting back into the pineapple and Hack5 Wi-Fi goodness. So thank you all for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed this series. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, ideas, leave them down in the comments below. I've been Glitch. This has been Hack5. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.